Hello, this video will give students an overview of how to use Blackboard Collaborate Ultra to meet live with their classes. Blackboard Collaborate Ultra is a web conferencing system used to meet live with others. You can join the sessions from within D2L. You'll also be able to review the recordings once they are posted right within D2L. Instructors may be using this tool for teaching sessions, office hours, online advising, giving course tours, or group projects. In order to participate in an ultra session, you'll need a computer with speakers and perhaps a built-in microphone. If you don't have these, you can also call in with a mobile number. You can also download the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra app to participate. It is helpful if you have a webcam because you may choose to turn on your webcam during the session. You don't have to have a webcam to participate, however. You'll also need internet access or be using your mobile data either on your laptop or your phone. A few tools that you may be using in Ultra include the talking and video features, the text chat, the hand raise, sharing screen or files, writing on the whiteboard with your instructor, meeting with others in breakout rooms, and then viewing the recording. To enter the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra session, the student would first need to log into their D2L course. They would then need to choose content on the nav bar, and there should be a module labeled either Ultra Meetings or Start Here, or some module that would let the student know that uh, to know where the Ultra Meeting link is. So in this case, we look under the Ultra Meetings uh, module, and we see the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra link. So we click on that, and we'll be able to see the available sessions. So it may be that the instructor is using just the course room. This is particularly uh, common when there is just open office hours, but then there also might be sessions particular for the date and time and when the session is gonna be occurring. So you just wanna make sure to follow what your instructor says in regards to which session to join. So we can select here to join the session. Um, if I am going to join the session with my computer audio, I would just choose join the session. If I'm going to need to dial in um, on my phone to where I can see the screen on my computer, but I'm dialing in on my phone because I don't have a microphone or speakers, I could choose dial in and use this number and pin to be able to access the session there. So I'll choose to join the session. And in joining the session, I should see this area, which is the um, ultra main room. So I see that uh, someone else is already in here, which is the moderator, which will be the instructor role. So my instructor's already in the session. So a couple of things that I will uh, need to be able to access as a student. First of all, I'll use these bottom links at the bottom of the screen. So this is my share audio, share video, and hand raise feature. To share my audio so that others can hear me speaking in the course, I press it once and then it will turn green. So this is letting me know that my audio is working and that others in the course can hear me. To turn off my audio to mute myself, I select this icon again and I mute myself. So it's a matter of just clicking it once to turn it on, clicking it once to turn it off. You do wanna make sure your audio is turned off when you are not speaking because if you leave your audio on and others are speaking in the course, sometimes feedback will come into the system, making it hard for others to hear. So just make sure either if you're on your computer or if you're on your phone dialing in that when you're not speaking you mute your microphone. Beside it is the share video area so you press it once to turn it on, you'll be able to preview it, you choose to share your video, and then you'll see yourself down here in the bottom corner, but others in the course will see you actually in the middle of the page. So they're seeing you uh, much larger than you're seeing yourself. So you press it once to turn it on, press it once to turn it off. Again, it is a proper practice to have your video off if you're not currently speaking because that will bring down the connectivity for the rest of the group. So keep in mind that these two tools are separate. So even if you don't have a webcam to share your video, you can still talk in the session by pressing the share audio button. So keep in mind that these are two different and remember that um, if you are not speaking, you don't want to have either of them on. Another option is the hand raise feature, which is on the last icon here on this toolbar. This is a great tool to use if your uh, instructor, if you have a question while your instructor is teaching, they may not realize you have a question, so you can just press this once 
and it will uh, send the instructor a message saying that you have raised your hand. Usually at that point, the instructor will stop and um, say, you know, please continue with your uh, question, and then you'll be given the option to um, discuss or ask your question. And then when you're finished, you can lower your hand, so just press it again. So press it once to raise your hand, press it once to lower your hand. Another area you may use as a student is on this purple pullout at the bottom right corner. So if you click that, you'll see the first icon at the bottom is a chat bubble. So this is where you are able to uh, text chat with the class. So I'll choose everyone. And here I'm able to post and send messages. Now keep in mind when I post to everyone, this is going to everyone um, in the course. So everyone in the session is able to see this text chat. So I can type things, I can type hello, I have a question, anything that I need uh, for, for others to see or hear. So um, if you're not able to turn on your uh, audio or your video, you can also uh, communicate this way uh, by posting to everyone. There may be cases where you need to speak only to your instructor. So in that case, you can go back to this arrow and search their name. And then you'll be able to message just that person. So this uh, message only went to my instructor versus if I come here, this these messages are going to everyone. So again, just make sure that you are posting your questions to the right channel um, and keeping in mind that when you post to the everyone channel, everyone in the course is going to be able to see that text chat. It might be a good idea to keep this uh, pullout open at all times just so that you can follow the text chat as others are text chatting in. Um, but you are also able to just X out of this because if a new message is posted, you'll see it slide out here uh, for a few seconds. So for example, if the instructor said something, you would see a little slide out here for um, a little while. Now, once uh, after a couple of seconds, it's going to disappear, but you can always get back to it by doing the purple slide out the chat, and then you'll be able to see who posted it and what they posted. Under the next tab, the icon that has two individuals, this is the participant or attendees tab. This is where you're able to see who else is in the session. So in this case, it's just the moderator, which is the teacher role, um, and myself as the participant or the student role. In a real situation, there would obviously be a lot more participants in the course room. In many cases, the instructor may be sharing content with you so that you see this in the screen. So on this screen right now, we're looking at a whiteboard. So the instructor may uh, write on the whiteboard so that you're able to see. And they might do so just for you to watch and you not to interact. But there may be times when they say, please interact, please help solve the problem, etc." So in that case, you can use these tools at the very top to use the pencil icon and maybe get a different color. And you're able to interact and write um, and collaborate on that particular screen. There might also be times where they are using the whiteboard area and, for, and would like for you to use the text chat. So they might have a question posted here, or they might verbally give you a, a question. And in that case, you just use the text icon. Again, you can pick your color. And then you would just give a response. So you would type in your response, click off of it, and then now that has been uh, posted for everyone so that everyone in the course can see it. So again, you may be using this whiteboard area to interact with your professor and others in the class. There may also be times when the instructor is sharing their screen with you. So in this case, they're sharing the Gordon website. So um, they'll be able to click on things and show you things. And again, your role here is just watching their screen um, and viewing what they're seeing on their desktop. There might be other times when the instructor is sharing a PowerPoint file with you. And in that case, you might just be expected to follow along with them. 
Um, there might also be cases where you're asked to interact. So in that case, you might be asked to, you know, put check marks or type your name or whatnot. So in this case, you might be asked to describe your pencil and, you know, put a check mark beside the items that you already know about, etc. So in that case, again, with these uh, files, it might be that you're just, they're just being shared with you, or it might be that you're uh, being asked to interact with them. And in that case, you might use the pencil or the text tool. In some cases, it may be that the instructor asks you to complete a poll, uh, which is just a little pop-up that will occur on the screen, and you just simply answer the question. So in this case, the teacher has started a poll, and we just simply answer it. And then the instructor might choose, once everyone has answered, to show the responses. So we'll be able to see generally how the class uh, responded. And these uh, polls might be just survey questions, general opinion questions, or they might be questions related to the content that you're learning about in the course or in the session. It may also be that your instructor decides to put you and your classmates in breakout rooms. Breakout rooms are the equivalent of breaking into smaller groups in a regular classroom setting. So in this case, uh, you and several other students will be placed into a special area within this session so that you all can discuss a topic in a more private and intimate area. So when the instructor starts the breakout groups, you'll be told that they're getting started. You'll be told which group you're moving into. And so in this case, now that you are in Group 1 Breakout Room, you, uh, as well as your classmates that are also in Group 1 Breakout Room, uh, are having exclusive conversations. So the video, the audio that you use at this point in the group is only going to be heard um, by others in the group. So again, it's very much um, exclusive. So uh, when you're in your groups area, you can actually come to this purple slide out. And you can come to this share content area, the third icon over. And in that case, you may be able to share your own whiteboard so that you guys can discuss uh, your topic at hand via this whiteboard that we looked at a little bit earlier with the text, uh, the pencil tool or the text tool. You will have the option of also sharing your screen application. You will also have the option of sharing your files or even starting polls. Now, these tools might be used in a breakout room setting. They also might be used in the situation of you are giving permission to present to the class. So it might be that your uh, instructor is allowing you to present to the rest of the class for maybe like a project. And so in that case, you're given permission and you need to share your screen to show a website, a Word document, a PDF, or you might be uh, asked to upload your PowerPoints. So to use the whiteboard, again, you would just simply click the purple slide out check the third icon over which is share content share the whiteboard and then use these tools to write on that whiteboard when you are in a breakout room or when you are presenting as the instructor you also are able to clear the screen which is not something you're able to do just as a normal student interacting but if you are in the presenter role you're able to um, clear the screen when you get finished with that you can just press stop the sharing the whiteboard the next thing you can do is share your screen, and again, this is in cases when you're in your breakout room or when you are presenting to the whole class if your instructor has given you that special permission. So we choose share application. We pick what screen we would like to share. And then I'm able, when I see this, um, I call this inception of the screens. So screen within screen within screen within screen. Then we are able to open up a new tab and we're able to go to whatever website we would like to go to to share with the rest of the class. So in this case, we are sharing um, our screen with the rest of the class. So when I get finished, I go back to my main area and stop sharing my screen. Lastly, here on the share content, again, the purple pullout on the bottom right, third icon over, I can choose to share files and I can choose to upload a file, a PowerPoint or a PDF that I can use um, to share with the rest of my um, classmates. So maybe I've created a PowerPoint that I'm going to be asked to share with my classmates. And so I'll select it and be able to share that with, my, uh, with the others in the room, almost as doing the teaching role. So in this case, once my file is loaded, I'll choose to share now. I'll pick the slide to share, and I'm able to see it over here. This also means that others in the classroom are able to see this um, sharing area. 
Um, as I move forward, I can use this area to write on my screen. So if I need to make a point, I can circle, I can type as I am sharing my PowerPoint. I'm able to annotate on top of it as either in the breakout room or as the instructor role in the classroom because I'm doing a class presentation. As others join your group, you'll see that their name is being um, added here. And so you'll be able to see as people come in and out of your group if you're using a breakout room. So when the instructor is able, uh, ready to end the breakout room and return everyone to the main session, you'll receive a message saying that you are returning back to the main room. And then you'll go back to the main area where the instructor is, uh, instruct is uh, the main leader of the session again and you are in a student role. So when you're uh, ready to exit the session, you simply just X out of the browser and it will close you out of this live session. After the session is complete, you may need to wait a few minutes to a couple of hours, depending on the length of the session, before you're able to go in and view the recording. To access the recording of the session, you'll need to log into your D2L course, choose content from the navigation bar, Select the Ultra module and enter in the Ultra block, just like as if you were going to be joining a session. Instead of joining a session, however, you're going to choose the three lines up here in the top left and choose Recordings. At that point, you should see a listing of the recordings and you simply just click on one and watch it to be able to view the video. If you don't see a listing of the recording, because maybe the recording was uh, completed a couple of weeks ago, you can choose here to recordings in a range and be able to search for a particular range. Um, again, if the recording was recorded earlier and you're needing to reference it. When you watch the recording, you'll be able to see everything but the breakout rooms. So you'll be able to see the audio, the video, the sharing of the screen, the sharing of the files, the whiteboard, as well as the text chat. You just will not be able to see specifics within the breakout room. And that is an overview of how to use Blackboard Collaborate Ultra.